Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing the best and worst fragrances launched in 2021. So this is my entire collection from this year. Most of these I purchased, some of them were sent to me complimentary, but this is everything that came out in 2021. Now, of course, I don't have every fragrance that launched this year. These would be notable fragrances from the brands that I usually talk about. A lot of these are carried at Sephora or their popular niche brands. I created this video last year and it seemed to be pretty popular, so I knew at the start of the year I was going to film this video again and I've kept track anytime a fragrance launched I have a note in my phone a running tally so I always put them in one of three categories my favorites there's a middle category of perfumes that I like they're not a favorite maybe I have some sort of issue with them so we'll talk about those and then of course I have my least favorite perfume launches of the year Fragrance is so subjective, completely personal, so make sure you let me know your feelings, your thoughts one way or another down in the comment section. And if there's anything that I skipped altogether that just fell off my radar, let me know so I can seek out all of your recommendations before the official end to 2021. Starting with my favorites, these are in no particular order. I didn't even attempt to rank them because they're so different and I don't even think they're necessarily meant for the same occasion. So these are what I would consider to be the best launches of 2021. Kaoli Eden Juicy Apple 01. This is my fragrance of the day and it's also the latest perfume to be added to my collection. It's beautiful. This is so fun and flirty. If you love fruity floral fragrances, you're going to love this. It has juicy red apple, wild berries, lychee, jasmine, amber crystals, sugared moss, and sensual musk. It's so new, but I feel confident adding it to this list because it's delicious. Slightly aquatic, there's something in this that makes my mouth water every time I smell it. This is going to be a crowd pleaser, definitely. Another one of my favorites this year is the new Gucci Flora Gorgeous Gardenia Eau de Parfum. It has white gardenia, jasmine, pear blossom. It also has brown sugar. Kind of smells like a sugared candied flower. It's really pretty. If you like florals, it's a little bit sweet. It's warm, sensual. Such a pretty fragrance. I think this is going to be beautiful for spring, summer. I, and it's so much better than the Eau de Toilette. For whatever reason, the last time I smelled that fragrance, it really irked me. There was something I couldn't connect with it, but this is absolutely stunning. I think for anybody who's looking for a nice, warm, sensual, floral fragrance that could be daytime, could also be evening and date night appropriate, this is beautiful, and I love this bottle. I have two perfumes here from Floral Street. The first is Arizona Bloom. I think this was my first Floral Street fragrance. And then I have Sunflower Pop. This is the Vincent Van Gogh. Both of these are really beautiful. The first, Arizona Bloom, I think this launched spring or summer, but this is a perfect fall winter fragrance. It kind of has caramel, vanilla, a hint of coconut, so I guess it could be sort of tropical, but it's very beautiful. This to me is a very warm coconut vanilla. So maybe a summer fall transitional fragrance, but I love it. It's light, it sits closer to the skin, but one of the prettiest perfumes this year by far. And Floral Street is a more affordable brand. I believe these full-size bottles retail for $78 at Sephora. So it's not a bad price point for a really beautiful fragrance. This is very zesty. It has citrus notes. It's floral, but it's just kind of light, fresh citrus. If you like something that's incredibly clean, this would be perfect for you. The dry down is so pretty. I don't lean towards citrus forward fragrances, so I was kind of turned off by the idea, but as soon as I sprayed it on my skin and I wore it for the day, I loved it. Fresh, feminine, this is going to be for somebody who wants something just very light, but in that way it's the perfect everyday fragrance. And I feel the same way about this new Versace Dylan Turquoise. This is an eau de toilette, it has lemon and mandarin, it's citrusy and zesty, it has a nice aquatic bite to it, but it's a fun fragrance. I just think it smells so pretty, it's energizing and just vibrant. Spring, summer, light every day if you're just maybe going to the gym, running errands, running to the grocery store. 
this is the type of fragrance that you just spray on and it almost has that fresh out of the shower type of scent. So I know this isn't going to be for everybody. This is not going to compete with those real heavy hitting niche fragrances, but it is a pretty light, very affordable fragrance. I would still argue this is one of the best of the year. This is another fruity floral. It's the new interpretation of Daisy. This is Marc Jacobs Daisy Oh So Intense. And it is so sweet. It has strawberry, honey, and moss. If you love the original, I think you would love this for maybe a girl's night or some sort of weekend, date night. It's a little bit sweet, but it's a fun fragrance. I think this would be perfect for somebody maybe in their teens, early 20s. It's a very youthful fragrance, but it's not too sweet. It has the perfect balance between the fruity notes and the floral notes. So it's incredibly feminine. I think this would be a lot of fun to wear and just a beautiful fragrance. This is another newer launch that was sent to me complimentary. This is the Flower Bomb Ruby Orchid by Victor and Rolf. If you love Flower Bomb, you have to try this and let me know what you think. I really like Flower Bomb. I don't own it in my collection because when I worked at Nordstrom in the cosmetics department, everybody wears Flower Bomb. In South Florida, Flower Bomb is the go-to fragrance. And I remember during the holidays, they would have tons of gift sets, just towers of Flower Bomb gift sets, every different combination you could imagine. And they just fly through them because it's what everyone wants. It's what everyone wears. So the husbands, the boyfriends, they come in, they, they buy them five at a time. So something about that, you know, we all want to be different with our fragrances. As much as I love it, it's not something that I would personally wear. But this new interpretation, this is on another level. It's very sexy, definitely more evening appropriate. It has vine peach, ruby orchid, and bourbon vanilla. And it was inspired by burlesque shows. So that right there should tell you the kind of mood, the kind of vibe this fragrance is gonna give off. It's showstopper, dressed up, bold red lip, the highest heels in your closet, girls night out, date night, very sexy, seductive type of perfume. I would put this in the same category as Good Girl from Carolina Herrera, Black Opium from YSL, I think that's a good comparison. My next favorite is Fantasia Veneta from Bulgari. This was part of a larger collection launch and I kicked myself because I never got a chance to smell the rest of them. I know this line was available at Bloomingdale's, but I don't think I ever saw the entire collection at the counter. So Fantasia Veneta is the only one that I have tried. It has vanilla, rose, musk, patchouli. It's a beautiful fragrance, but it launched during spring. I remember thinking this is so pretty, but it's definitely more of a fall winter forward perfume. And because I've just been experimenting with so many fragrances lately, I haven't picked this up as much as I would have liked. But I have to talk about it because I really like it. It's so nice. If you're familiar with Portrait of a Lady, this would be maybe the diet version. It's definitely the more affordable version and it, it's not quite the same. I don't think it's maybe that level. But the notes are very similar and I think the mood is very similar. This was supposed to be a party fragrance, a night out fragrance. I think this would actually be really pretty for holiday parties. Tom Ford Soleil Brulant. This launched over the summer. With their summer collection, I love this gold bottle. It looks so luxe. And the scent, it just melts me. It's meant to capture the brilliance of a golden sun beaming on a private oasis. I love that description because that is exactly how I felt about this perfume the first time I tried it. I remember I saw it at Saks, tried it on my arm, and I loved the way it dried down, so I ended up placing an order from Selfridges because it was less expensive. It's pretty. I smell honey, warmth. Yes, it's very floral, but I kind of just feel like I'm sunbathing somewhere remote. <laughs> now we're getting into the more expensive luxury niche fragrances that launched in 2021. I said I wasn't ranking these, but I did attempt some sort of organization. This probably shouldn't be included at all because it isn't truly a 2021 launch. 
but Guerlain did go away from this line and brought it back this year so we're just going to include it on the list it's certainly one of the best fragrances I purchased this year and I highly recommend it this is the Spiritus Double Vini from Guerlain one of the most beautiful decadent luxurious vanilla fragrances I have ever smelled in my life and I had heard so much about it before this launched and I heard the rumors that it went away, it was coming back, and I was patient. I did not purchase this bottle for $500 on eBay. I did see somebody was selling it for a crazy amount of money. It's already expensive, but not quite that expensive. But it is worth the wait. You smell it and it is so perfect that it's hard to believe there aren't a million other vanilla fragrances that smell exactly like this. Like, why would somebody create a vanilla perfume that didn't smell like this? It's so good. And it has rum and spices. This is a deep, hearty, kind of woody vanilla. So it's a little bit sweet, but it's not maybe as creamy as you might think when you think about a vanilla forward fragrance. Mmm, but it's delicious. I have to put a question mark next to Commodity Gold because I'm not 100% sure when this launched. Probably should have looked it up, but this is new for me this year. I know Commodity has been around for a really long time because I had some of their fragrances before I even had a YouTube channel, but they recently went through a rebranding. I think they changed their website. This is such a pretty perfume. If you're a fan of the Spiritus Double Vinny, I think you would also be a fan of Commodity Gold because it's kind of similar in that it's vanilla forward. It's a little bit spicy, just pretty. What makes it even more interesting is that you can customize your scent space. So it's available in three different strengths, personal, expressive, which is this one, and bold. So depending on how you like to wear your fragrance, something a little bit closer to the skin, or maybe more office appropriate, gym appropriate, you're gonna go with personal. Or if you're looking for a special occasion or a date now, you just want everyone to smell you, then you would go with the bold. It's the same fragrance, but it's kind of tweaked depending on the scent space you're looking for. But I love this and I love all three interpretations. They're all amazing. I was actually surprised by how much I loved the personal because I thought, oh, why would I want something lighter than the expressive? This is perfect. But there's something about it that is amazing. So I really like all three of these. Delina La Rose. I think this was my very first new fragrance of 2021. This was such an exciting launch, a beautiful fragrance, and I think this is a great addition to the Delina lineup. I really like the original Delina and the exclusive. Delina La Rose brings something completely different to the table. So I think this could be an addition to your collection, but it might just be for somebody who doesn't even care for Delina. They're so different. It's aquatic, it's floral, almost sparkling. I would describe this as a sparkling floral. And it's so pretty. The one thing it absolutely shares in common with Delina is that it's a princess perfume. You smell this and it's like the most feminine thing you've ever smelled. This light baby pink represents the fragrance perfectly. It's so pretty. And then we have the latest edition from Parfum de Marly. This is Oriana, another princess perfume. And of course, I love this bright fuchsia pink bottle. This tells you everything you need to know about the fragrance. It is so bright and happy. It's sweet, it's floral. I could see this as a night out, girls night out maybe a date night. It has mandarin, orange blossom, black currant, raspberry, marshmallow, ambret, chantilly cream, and musk. As soon as I read the notes and I read marshmallow, I was sold on this fragrance. I knew from that moment that I had to have it and it did not disappoint. I had such high expectations of this fragrance and that can be a dangerous territory. I felt the same way about Delina La Rose actually but this exceeded my expectations. I love wearing this perfume. I need to start wearing this more because it is truly one of the most beautiful perfumes in my collection. And then my last two favorites are both from Roja. This is Reckless. These launched during the spring. Reckless is very similar to Oriana. They're not the same. They're different enough. I certainly don't feel ridiculous owning both of them, 
But when Oriana came out, I thought, huh, this is sparking a memory. I feel like I've smelled this before. And it's Reckless. I think Reckless doesn't have quite so much Mandarin. It's not as citrusy. It almost has like a soda cola type of smell to it. It's so pretty. It's sweet. It's floral. It's addicting. It reminds me so much of Dior Hypnotic Poison. That's another one. Reckless reminds me of both Oriana and Hypnotic Poison from Dior, but those two fragrances are so different. So you can see these are all different fragrances. But if you like one, chances are high you'll like the other. Mm. This is one of the sexiest, most seductive fragrances. I would not wear this for daytime. This is an evening only, date night, girls night out, special occasion type of fragrance. It smells very elegant. So I think you could wear this to a holiday party, would definitely be appropriate. Which leaves my very last favorite fragrance and what I would consider to be the best perfume launch of 2021, 51. It is just incredible. And I know I've waxed poetic about this fragrance in so many videos. From the first time I sprayed it, it was love at first sniff. It smells like the sunset captured in a bottle. It smells like vacation, and, but it's not overly tropical. It's not like a fruity pina colada. It just smells like, it actually smells very natural. Like you are connecting with nature outside. It has this natural beauty, natural wonder. It's amazing. And I know it has a laundry list of ingredients. The one thing about Roja perfumes, if you look them up, they list it all. So I could probably give you 20 keynotes. When I smell this fragrance, I definitely pick up on raspberry peach. Maybe a little bit of jasmine, musk. I get sandalwood and I definitely get vanilla. It's almost like a creamy coconut milk. But because it has that warmth to it, I think you could easily wear this fall winter as well. It's never not appropriate. I instantly wanted this to become my signature scent, wear it all the time. I just love it so much. You know when you really connect with the fragrance and it's like this, this is the one, it's for me. That it, That's how I felt, it was electricity, that just instant connection. I don't always feel that about fragrances. You know, I'll smell a perfume and I like it, but just because I like it doesn't mean I want to wear it on myself. It just means it's a pleasant scent. 51, I want to bathe in it. I want body lotion. I want hair care products. I just want everything in my life. I want candle. I want to scent this room with this fragrance. I am completely in love, 100% obsessed with 51. I think if you like the sound of the notes, you will not be disappointed. Just a beautiful perfume. Now, before I talk about my least favorite perfume launches of the year, there are a couple fragrances that are somewhere in the middle. They're not fails, but they're not best of, and I feel like they are still worth a mention. So these would be kind of middle of the road. This MCM Eau de Parfum, I love this fragrance, but it is insanely light. And a couple of these favorites are light as well. So it's not that I need my fragrance to smack people in the face the moment they get anywhere near me, but this is so light from the moment you first spray it. And it's so unfortunate because it's beautiful and I love wearing it. And I think it's a really cool fragrance, not cool as in cool versus hot, but it just smells like a really fashionable, young, trendy girl or boy. Anybody could wear this, it's unisex. Love the fragrance, but I wish it lasted longer. I have two Kaoli fragrances that fall into the same category, the Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21 and Invite Only Amber 23. Of the two, the Invite Only would be my favorite of the two. It's beautiful. It's a sexy, spicy, very seductive perfume, but I feel like it's not perfect on its own. I like to wear this with the Vanilla 28. That is a killer combination. But could I really say this is a best of 2021 if I will never wear it on its own? I don't think so. So instead it goes in the middle, but it's a beautiful perfume, highly recommend, especially if you like that style of fragrance. It's a little bit too boozy for me on its own, but if you like that, you will love it. And then the Utopia Vanilla Cocoa 21, this was my very first Kaoli fragrance. 
and there was so much buzz around Kaoli and at the time I hadn't tried any of them so my expectations were just through the roof when I unboxed this and I think I was unboxing a couple different fragrances that day. I like it. I think it's really nice. It's a pretty coconut fragrance. There's just something that I don't love 100%. I think this would probably pair really nicely with the Vanilla 28, of course. Maybe even the Eden Juicy Apple. That could be a kind of unexpected combination. I felt like it smelled a bit too adolescent and maybe a little bit artificial. This is going to be my controversial pick. Are you ready? Italica, the Eau de Parfum from Zerjoff. I've heard so many people rave about this perfume, say it's the most delicious, amazing thing ever, and so that's what inspired me to go ahead and blind buy, and I'm so glad I picked this up in the smaller bottle. This was all that was available. I got the one ounce, the 30 ml from Twisted Lily, and with my discount code, I used my own code, <laughs> I knocked off an additional $10, and I think it was $90, which is still a lot of money, but it's a lot better than had I purchased the full-size bottle. I really like this. I wanted to love it, of course. There's just something about it. It's too much. I think it's too strong. It's just too intense, and I don't love the way it smells on my skin. I had such high hopes, high expectations for this perfume, and it's good. It's really good, it's not great. I feel like I would probably either need to spray only one spritz or layer this with something else because if I were to spritz the way I normally would, I would probably gag and have a coughing fit because it's just so heavy. I like almond so much and I like all of the notes. There's no reason why this shouldn't be perfect and yet there's something about it that I don't really connect with. It reminds me a lot of Ouverture. Between the two, I don't see any reason why I should have them both. So when I do organize my collection, which is coming soon, I'm going to go through all of my fragrances and I'm going to do a giant much needed declutter. She could be on the chopping block. I don't think so, but it's one of them has to go. And now it's time to talk about the worst perfume launches of 2021. Please don't take any offense if I say I don't like a fragrance that you really liked. It's completely personal, subjective, and fragrances can smell completely different on two different people. So this was just my experience, but as always, feel free to sound off down in the comment section. Starting with this Alice Brooklyn Super Amber, the Eau de Parfum. I like it. It's not terrible, but it's just so light. I think this might even be lighter than the MCM Eau de Parfum. I remember when I unboxed this, I think I was trying a couple fragrances. I could not smell anything. I don't know if I was nose blind or what, but I tried it again the next day and the moment you spray it on your skin, it's light. You can barely detect it, which is kind of strange because you hear super amber and it's in this kind of amber bottle, you think, wow, this is going to be really warm and sensual and potent. The fragrance that I do get when I really stick my nose right on my arm is lovely. It's a lovely smelling perfume. The smell is not bad, but wow, it is so light. I could not imagine if I had purchased this myself. It was sent to me complimentary. The rest of the list is on my phone for obvious reasons. I didn't like them, didn't want to keep them. The number one offender, we might as well just get straight to it, Vanilla Diorama. I was so disappointed in this perfume because I guess I had high expectations, sure, but shouldn't you have high expectations from Dior when it comes to perfume and their elevated line? I mean, this had to be amazing. And some of you said that you really like this fragrance, so certainly my opinion is just that. It's my opinion. I have some notes written down. Dry down is much better. Medicinal, boozy, harsh. Rum note smells like a shot. Very masculine. Less sweet, tobacco vanille. Less feminine and smooth angel share. Wouldn't recommend for men either. <laughs> that pretty much sums up how I felt about the fragrance. I can't even remember smelling it now, but I do remember thinking that it was not very vanilla. It was a lot more rum and it almost smelled too much like pure alcohol. It just wasn't for me. And I like a boozy type of perfume. I would say I have the same complaint 
about invite only, but I still like this enough to wear it. Vanilla Diorama, I didn't even like enough to keep or want to wear, and I didn't even like it enough to gift it to my husband. That's usually what happens if I purchase a fragrance and I think, eh, it's not right for me. I'll see if he likes it. So that actually went back and I exchanged it and I ended up picking up Hallie, Haley, excuse me, from Tiziano Frenzy, 10 times better. Tuberose New from Tom Ford. My note here says boring and unpleasant, which is unfortunate because Tom Ford is known for their fragrances. Of course, at one point, I think his, his fragrances were kind of the gold standard, at least department store brand wise. I really like Tuberose, so this should have been perfect for me, but I just did not really care for it all. And I don't think it was bad, but it was just so boring, so basic, so nothing that how can you justify spending that kind of money for a fragrance like that? It has to move you and really speak to you. Like Lost Cherry, Rose Prick. I love those perfumes from Tom Ford. Even the Noir Extreme for men, oh, love that fragrance. I would wear that every day and just douse myself in it. You have to have some sort of connection to make it work. Edinburgh from Chanel. I was disappointed by that launch. It was part of the exclusive collection. It's nice, it kind of smells like you're in the middle of the woods. And I like the fact that they incorporate a lot of natural fragrances because Coco Mademoiselle loved being out in nature and she loved Edinburgh, spending time there. So I, I think I appreciate the story behind the fragrance more than the fragrance itself. It's not something that I would ever wear. And I received a couple samples from the boutique, but even when I read the notes, I kind of knew it's not my type of fragrance. I know plenty of people who just love that type of perfume. They want something that's kind of fresh, clean. That's perfect. I need something a little floral or sweet and delicious or amber or something. Give me something that I can really sink my teeth into. This was just pure like pine needles in the forest. Pretty fragrance, not something that I would wear. Love Don't Be Shy Extreme. I have heard so many incredible reviews about this fragrance. I don't really care for the original and when I try the Extreme, I don't know what it is. I'm so turned off by that perfume. And a lot of people compared Love Don't Be Shy Extreme to, or even just Love Don't Be Shy to Oriana and Reckless, which I love. So there's something in there and I think it is the Neroli. I'm not a huge Neroli fan. I don't like Neroli Portofino from Tom Ford. It just kind of smells dated, kind of old drab, not good, a little bit soapy. I don't think I've ever let it sit long enough on my skin to see what happens past that note because as soon as it hits my nose, I don't like it. And then the last fragrance I had on here was Apple Brandy. I really liked it, but I ended up gifting it to my husband and I think he actually wears it. Beautiful perfume, so not bad, but something that I just had to give away because I would never get any use out of it. I think it leans a little bit more masculine and it's unfortunate because when I read the notes, I thought, oh yes, this is going to be delicious, right up my alley. It's going to pair perfectly with my angel share. But no, it, it just wasn't quite right. And that completes my list of the best and worst perfume launches for 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you found it interesting. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I cannot wait to read through your comments and hear your thoughts on the launches this year. So be sure to let me know some of your favorites, your least favorites. We'll keep the conversation going down in the comments section. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.